showing kindness or grace, that I'm not going to allow my father's song to take your life. Let's get ready for the word. Amen? All right. All right. All right. Last time we were together, let me give you what we were talking about. Remain standing till I give you that. We won't read the scripture right now. We'll read some scriptures as we go along. But thank God for all of you today. So good to see all of our pastors and preachers and teachers and leaders and those of you that are back with us today. Thank God for your presence here and for how the Lord has carried you and You've done the call of God, the work of God, and back with us today. Always good to see you and have all of us here in the house together. God bless each and every one of you. Last time we were together, we started on the second thing that we have been talking about now for a few Sundays. So I want to give you that, and then we'll jump into some scriptures right after that. I said to you that God moves how? Huh? God moves like only God can. And I'm going to be know when God moves like God moves, nobody else can take the credit for it. Not pastor. Not you. Nor any of us. When God moves like only God can, God gets the glory. Amen? Somebody just shout hallelujah, Jesus. And go ahead and sit down if you want to at this point. And we'll come into some scriptures in just a few minutes. In our last time together, we talked about the sound that was heard in Acts chapter 2. Talked about the sound. You remember that? We also talked about where the sound came from. Came from where? Heaven. Heaven. That's what the scripture says. It was something that earth couldn't even produce or yield. Came straight from heaven. And then we talked also about the mighty rushing wind that did what? Filled the house where they were sitting. Now, all of those things that Luke described there in that chapter was associated with fire. He says, cloven tongues like fire set upon each of them. And they all began to speak in a language, in a tongue. To where every nationality that was represented there could understand and hear and know what was taking place and what was going on. We've tried as best we could to describe those things that Luke described in the second chapter as best he could because he had never seen anything like it or heard of anything like it before. He talked about the mighty rushing wind that filled the house. And he talked about the cloven tongues like as of fire, like fire that appeared unto them. Did y'all see these babies up here this morning? 
Now, we take a service like that, and we say, well, we had a good service this morning. But we don't put emphasis on how awesome the service was. I'm telling you, I'm in an awesome service today. I sense God's presence in this place. We, we take sporadic movements and we, and we label them and we put thoughts sometimes into our own minds and our own heads and sometimes thoughts into the heads of, did you see, did you see that baby up here almost doing the shoot this morning? <laughs> if, I had on a different, if I had on a different pair of shoes, I, I, I'd show, show you how to do it. But, but, but this shoe won't get it like I wanted to get it. And in their own way, they were singing and magnifying and blessing God. May not do it like we do it because we've been churching for a long time. <laughs> you, know, you know something I've come to understand that we know how to have church. But when it comes to walking in the power of the Spirit of God, Sometimes I question that. And that's why we find ourselves labeling certain times and certain moves as with, 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 different, with different adjectives of, of how we describe what God is doing. I like the way Luke gave this description. But I said to you last Sunday upon closing, you will never see this specific type of description. Even though you see more powerful moves of God in the book of Acts, and I'm going to give you some of those in just a minute, you don't hear it described the way Luke describes it here, or Dr. Luke, should I say, in the second chapter of Acts. You, you hear and you'll see in a few minutes where, where people were filled with the Spirit on other occasions. But he didn't describe it and the Scripture doesn't describe it and the writer doesn't describe it as they were all sitting in one place on one accord waiting on one thing. And that is for the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill and indwell them. Other places we're going to read these passages of Scripture, those that were filled in Acts. You don't see where there was a sound. You, you won't even see, even though some of the Scriptures will talk about what took place coming from heaven, but you won't see where it's associated with the sound or where they use the words that came from heaven. You won't find in these other passages where it came like a mighty rushing wind. And it doesn't talk about where there appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire. But they were filled and they were anointed, and they were called, and they were sent to do powerful exploits. It just wasn't associated with all of the adjectives you see here in the second chapter of Acts that Dr. Luke gives in his description. Now, why am I saying all of that? Because I want you to rest assured that nowhere else in Acts, when the Spirit was poured out, does it give the kind of descriptions Luke gives in the second chapter. But trust me when I tell you, there were many, many more great outpourings of the Spirit. The reason I submit that to us today is because I want us to understand what I said some weeks ago. God doesn't move in the same way every Sunday that he does maybe a previous Sunday. But you still must recognize it's the Spirit of God. 
He won't have folk running every Sunday. He won't have them shouting every Sunday. And sometimes it seems like we drop off the porch a little bit when we're giving our description of how was the service this morning? It was good. But then on a Sunday when a word of wisdom or word of knowledge or prophetic word comes forth or tongues go forth, or praise go forth, or adoration goes forth. And sometimes when we, when we find ourselves in, in minutes and moments of praise and adoration to God, and people going up, and, and folk going out, and all of those things, how was the worship this morning? Man, we had an awesome move of God this morning. I thank God that every time he allows us to come up the steps on this platform, it's an awesome morning to me. Just the fact that God woke me up this morning, I was pain-free, I'm clothed in my right mind, I have a reasonable portion of health and strength, and God is still keeping me and blessing me and anointing me, just like you that are sitting there right now. Listen, you are awesome because of what God is doing in you right now. And if the awesomeness of God depended on sporadic moments and sporadic movements, I'd have to call him on the carpet and question him sometime. You won't find it anywhere else in the scripture where a description is given like it was given in the second chapter of Acts of the apostles. But listen, there were some mighty moves. There were some powerful moves of God. Look at Acts chapter 4. Go to Acts chapter 4. I want to read it first from the King James Version, Acts chapter 4. Look at verse 8, starting at verse 8. You can start at verse 1 and read all the way down if you want to. Well, y'all got time? Now, I recognize that voice. Is that Deacon Dale Martin? Where's Dale? Oh, okay. I know I, I, I know I heard the voice. All right. Is Tamiko there with you? Hey y'all. Good to see y'all this morning. Acts chapter four. I tell you what, y'all got time? Let's start at the first verse and read down together. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved, listen to this, they were grieved with Peter and the others as they came upon them and did what? Taught the people and preached. I'm in the King James Version right now. They taught the people and they what? And they preached. And they got mad and vexed and grieved how many of y'all know in this day and time we need some teaching? And we need some preaching. Somebody say like we've never needed it before. Honey, I welcome teaching. I welcome preaching. And it doesn't have to come from me. I welcome it from you. I welcome it from our children and our babies. We're in a day and time where we need teaching and we need preaching and we need it more than we've ever needed it before. Now, anybody who gets mad about teaching and preaching, especially if it's rightly divided, got some issues with God. Not with me, not with you. We like to think people have issues with us. No. 
Anybody's got an issue with teaching and preaching, especially if it's rightly divided, especially if it's something God's saying to you that's going to help you, and it's rightly divided, and it's going to do something to either change you or strengthen you or stabilize you in your walk with God. And get mad about that. They got issues with God. Let's read. And the people, as they taught, they became grieved as they preached through Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. Verse 3, and they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day. For it was now evening time. In other words, when they, when they got a hold of Peter and the other apostles, they put them in prison. When they say put them in hold, as the King James Version said it, they arrested them and they locked them up. Verse 4. How bit many of them which heard the word did what? Believe. And the number of the men was about five. Thousand. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> How many of you are shooting for your 5,000 this year? You know what I think the Holy Spirit is saying to us as he's been saying to us the last few weeks? We need to be doing some goal setting. For souls. A part of my 2023 vision that you're going to be hearing about a little later on, you're not going to hear about it this morning because the Lord's not finished giving it to us. But a part of the 2023 vision is going to be the entire church soul winning. And you're not going to leave all the soul winning to the pastor or to a few preachers. As a matter of fact, we're not supposed to be doing the soul winning. We give you the word and teach you, and you're supposed to be winning the souls. A lot of y'all think we're supposed to be passing the torch. No, we are to light the torch and give it to you, and you are to pass the torch. We'll keep teaching you how to be lazy if we don't teach you how to win some souls. Part of the 2023 vision is to set a goal for soul winning. Some of us won't even invite people to come to church with us. Look how many folk you pass on your way here. And I know it's a dangerous time. You can't pick people up, can't bring them back. Get a number and we'll send the bus with a couple of guards on it. <laughs> Long as we get them here, they hear the gospel. Amen. You can talk to folk on your job. You can talk to people at lunchtime. If you don't believe you can win souls, look at all of the other stuff you talk about to people and you convince them and they become a part of what you talk about. You can talk about somebody else and folk will buy into it and hear it all day and they'll come in rolling their eyes at somebody because of something you said when they don't know anything about that person, but you convince them. If we can do that, why can't we convince people that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and we must be born again if we plan to get to the kingdom of God? Why can't we do it? Uh, Pastor, I just don't know how to talk. Come on now. You talk about the pyramid you're building financially, and people buy into that. And you got a down line going deep, going way down, where you have convinced folk that you can make this kind of money if you do this kind of thing. Why can't we talk about Jesus like that? Why can't we get folks saved? Why can't we? You know why? Because I just won't mind myself and make sure me and God's got our power and that's all of the power I need. No, he saved them and filled them with the Spirit so that they could become what? Witnesses. And if you don't start anywhere else, at least start in your home. Let's read. How bit many of them which heard the word did what? Believe. Believe. And the number of the men was about 5,000. Verse 5, and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest 
and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. Now all of these people that they name is very simple. They were a part of the Sanhedrin court which was the highest court in the land. It was their superior court team. And here they are bringing Peter and the other apostles that were filled with the Spirit on that day called Pentecost, and now they find themselves on trial. Help us, God. Sometimes in your witnesses, you're going to be witnessing, you're going to be found on trial. Folk going to want to know if you really know what you're talking about. When you start talking about God being a healer, some folk going to want to know if you really know what you're talking about. When some of you start telling your story of how God delivered you and what God has delivered you from, you're going to find yourself on trial. People are going to want to know if you really know what you're talking about. And let me tell you this, when they start giving you their story and their version, don't you back down from what you know God has done for you. Any witnesses in here today can tell a story and not back down from it? I know God saved me. I know God healed me. I know God delivered me. I know God empowered me. I know God gave me his Holy Spirit. I know God gave me the authority that I operate in today, not to usurp it over any other authority, but know who you are in the Lord. Verse 7, and when they had set them in the midst, what did they ask? By what power or by what name have you done this? By what power? <laughs> when I read that, when I read that, I chuckled just like I'm chuckling now. Because people in this day and time, just like then, are asking by what power Do you bless the name of God? By what power do you run when they don't see anybody chasing you? By what power do you just sit up and cry when nobody has done anything to you? By, by what power do you live like you live and walk like you walk and trust like you trust? By what power? power and let me tell you something the world is looking for power and a lot of them are finding it in green power but how many of you know you can have green power and still not have power you can have green power but you can't buy healing you can have green power and buy a bed but you can't buy sleep you can have green power and buy a refrigerator or a freezer and still not be able to eat what's in it. You can have power to have an automobile and still not be able to drive it. If God doesn't give us the strength and if God doesn't give us his power and if God doesn't keep us healed and if God doesn't wake us up in the morning and if God doesn't give us an appetite to sit down and eat, by what power? Do you have to do all of these things? The world is questioning the power as they did then of the resurrected Christ. Honey, let me tell you, the power that Jesus has, the world didn't give it to him. That's why these men were on trial. Sanhedrin was questioning by what power what authority, what name are you using to do what you're doing? By what power do you have to where in one day of preaching and teaching 5,000 souls? I look at on a given Sunday, five souls come to this house. Man, we go up in smoke. Just imagine 5,000 in one day 
turning to Jesus to get ready to be empowered with the Holy Spirit so we can turn this world upside down and inside out. And now they're asking, by what power, what name, what authority do you have to do what you are doing? The world is seeking this kind of power. The world wants this kind of power, but not to use it the way God wants us to use it. That's why when I looked at this passage of Scripture, honestly, a lot of things go through my mind. When he talks about what, by what power, what name, what authority do you have that you know that you are so sure of to do the exploits that you are doing. We want this kind of power. The world wants the kind of power that they saw exemplified here. Some of them want it so they can use it against Christ. Because the world have been talking for years about destroying Jesus the Christ. And I have the question, I, I have a counter question. When they ask by what power do you have to do these kind of things, man, immediately a question came to mind. When they start talking about diminishing Jesus and diminishing his power, I had to immediately ask them a question. If you're going to diminish his power, then what power are you going to use? If you're going to take the authority and the power that Christ has, then what power are you going to use? Because he went into the grave, cleaned the grave out, made it a suitable place for all of us to wait the resurrection. And then on the third morning, he got up. And what was his first words? All power. Somebody say that with me. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And if you're going to wrestle him for his power, what power are you going to use? If you're, gonna his, if you're gonna wrestle his power to save folk, what power are you gonna use? If you're gonna wrestle his power to keep filling people with the Holy Spirit, what power are you gonna use? If you're gonna wrestle his power of healing from him, what power are you going to use? When he says, all power is given unto me. Look at the next verse, look at the next verse. Where did you get this power from to do this? They ask Peter and the others. Look at verse 8. Then Peter. <laughs> What's the next word? Feel. Feel. Somebody shout it out. Feel. Filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, then be it known unto you all and to all of the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you. How? Whole. Y'all remember last week the Lord dropped that word on us? You remember last week he dropped the word hold on us? Listen, I don't just stand saved. I stand sanctified. I stand filled with the Holy Spirit. I stand as a whole 
being in Jesus the Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. You stand fragmented if you're just saved or if you're just sanctified. How many of you know we need to be filled with the Spirit? And this is what Peter said in the 8th verse. He said, it is by the filling of the Spirit that he is doing these great exploits to where 5,000 were added to the church. And then the impotent man was made whole. Somebody shout it again. Verse 11 says, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Jot down verse 8 there in that fourth chapter. Underline it, underscore it, what, people, what Peter talked about being filled. But you didn't hear anything about there being a sound or a rushing wind. Look at verse 31. Go down to verse 31 of that same fourth chapter of Acts. Scroll down or turn to verse 31. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at verse 31. Let's read. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all, there's that word, what? Feel with what? With who? The Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Read verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Do you know oneness is important? When the Spirit is poured out, they were of one heart. They were of one soul. Notice what he says. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his or her own. But they had all things common. Do you know one of the purposes of being filled with the Spirit and filled along with other Spirit-filled believers is that we got all things common. Now, we may disagree on a lot of things, but one thing you can't disagree on, and that is the one who fills us with the Spirit. I may do things a little bit different. I may say it a little different. I may handle it a little different. But we've got to all come to the unity of the one saying that if we're filled with the Spirit, it wasn't four or five different gods that filled us with the Spirit. And you can't have four or five different kinds of Holy Spirit. How many of you know there's only one Holy Spirit? Now, there are many gifts that are given to the body, but they all work together for the edifying, and the Spirit is the same. You got folk trying to bring divisions about who we got filled by. No, there's only one filling. And if we're going to be filled, we're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit by God himself. A whole lot of giftings and a lot of things that we do differently. But listen, it ought to work together and in harmony by one spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of God. Listen to this, what he says in verse 33. And with what? Great power. Somebody shout that. Great power. Say it again. Great power. Listen. What takes place here in these verses of them being filled with the Holy Spirit, remember, is not the description that was given in Acts chapter 2. But it came with great power. You remember when they were filled in Acts chapter 2? and You remember the sound and the rushing wind? 
that came from heaven and they were all filled with the Spirit and they got power to witness and now here we are way down here in the 31st and 32nd and 33rd verses of that same chapter and now here they are filled with the Spirit and they come out with what? Great power. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. And neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that they were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. Any spirit-filled believers in here today? If so, you got great power. Look at another one. Look at another. Look at another feeling. How, how about the 13th chapter of Acts? How about Acts 13? And, and look at verse 9. Look, look at what was happening in the church that was at Antioch. You had certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius and Cyrene. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And when you get down to verse 2, and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Spirit said that. What, Mama? And Papa, Holy Spirit said it. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I have set them apart, have called them to. Go on down to verse 9, because if not, I'll stay here. Go on down to verse 9. Let's look at verse 4. So they being sent forth by what? Who? The Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed on into Cyprus, and then they go on, and they go on, and they go on. And when you get down to verse 6, and when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, uh-oh, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. Do you not know that where the Holy Spirit resides and feels there's always a counter spirit that's trying to imitate and act like and thank God for the filling of the Holy Spirit because you don't have to imitate and you don't have to act like just live, just walk, just stay in relationship, just do. Look at what happens. This guy which was with the deputy of the country he was a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Verse 8, but Elimus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, look at that, filled with the Holy Spirit set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? It takes the filling of the Spirit, my brothers and sisters, 
to stand against evil and wicked spirits and still boldly as they were empowered earlier to stand and proclaim the power of the resurrected Christ. Scroll on down or keep turning and get down to verse 52 in the 13th chapter and you will see again where they were filled with the Spirit. Somebody jot it down. Acts chapter 19 and verse 6 and you'll find again where they were filled with the Spirit. Now, why are you telling us all of this? Pastor, you're talking to a spirit-filled believer. Why do I need to know all of this? I know what the Holy Spirit does. Well, maybe somebody in here who's not filled yet, like you are, that need to understand the purpose and the meaning of being filled with the Spirit. And what exploits you can do when the Holy Spirit comes and fills us. But then there's another reason I'm giving you these passages of Scripture that we have already read and those that you can read in your hearing is because when you go back to the second chapter and then you compare it with the ones that we just read, you'll come to understand that all of these were wonderful and valid works of the Spirit. The reason I give them to you is because I don't want you to miss this morning that all of these are works and all of these are valid and all of these we can talk about of how people were filled with the Spirit without looking at him doing it one way all the time. Somebody on your roll right now, filled with the Spirit, is experiencing something that you may not be experiencing right now. You may be experiencing one thing that because of your feeling and somebody else may be, somebody may be experiencing a healing right now while you are experiencing a wholeness. But how is it coming? By the Spirit. Somebody else may get the, the tongue, but the Spirit may be giving somebody else the interpretation of that tongue. But how is it all coming? By the Spirit. Somebody else may leave here today with an urgency from God to say, I need to go back home and I need to do some witnessing in my house. While somebody else may say, well, you know, my house is already saved, but I'm sensing the urgency of the Spirit today to just go back into my house and just start walking through the house and blessing God for everything that God has done. But how is it going to all come? It's going to all come by Spirit. I give you these passages of Scripture because they're wonderful. They're valid works of the Spirit. Yet on none of the occasions that I have given you from the fourth chapter of Acts all the way down to the 19th chapter of Acts, none of these other occasions did you hear of a sound that came from heaven. None of these other occasions did you hear of a mighty rushing wind. None of these other occasions did you hear of cloven tongues like fire sitting upon them and they were all filled with the Spirit. You don't hear those other adjectives associated with it. But does it mean that the Spirit didn't show up? That's why I don't look for God to do the same thing the same way all the same time. Listen to this. The strange sound was for that particular day in the second chapter of Acts. But that's not really the importance of everything that was taking place with the Spirit. Sometimes God does one-offs. What do I mean by that? Sometimes what God does today, he's not going to pull it off like that tomorrow. 
Sometimes God does one-offs. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, God's doing something with you that he's not going to do in the morning. He may want to do it a different way in the morning. But can you deny that it's not his spirit? Sometimes God will have folk to come in a very powerful way, screaming and hollering and, 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 and tears streaming down their face, seeking Jesus, while another may get up and be drawn by the spirit and be walking slow and very sober and very sound. Does that disqualify them from receiving the spirit because they didn't come with the buck or with the quiver or with the shake? No. The same spirit that may be pulling one through tears may be pulling another through dry eyes and soberness, but still drawing them so that they can come to know Jesus. And sometimes we have a tendency to skip over the one with the dry eye and coming sober because I want to get to the one that's got tears streaming down, that's already bucking, that's already hollering. So when I lay my hands on them, something immediately is going to happen. But sometimes it's the one with the dry eye and the one that may not be moving at all that the Spirit is dealing with, and they may never cry a tear. But the transformation, when they say, Lord, I believe the transformation still takes place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Every now and then, God may do a one-off. <laughs> the way he blessed you the last time may not be the way he want to bless you this time. A special something for a single occasion might be what God is doing in the lives of some of you right now, that the way he does it now, it was for this occasion. It's that you needed a little more convincing. You needed a little more power. But as you grow in the grace and the knowledge of God, I won't have to do it this way the next time because now that you're learning of me, you can recognize my spirit even if it's... Can you imagine, can you just imagine as I did when I read this on a later occasion from Acts chapter 2? Can you imagine on a later occasion in the fourth chapter of Acts and in the 13th chapter of Acts and in the 19th chapter of Acts? Can you just imagine if the disciples would have said, today we weren't really filled with the Spirit. Because we never heard that sound. Help me somebody. <laughs> can, you, can you just imagine that? Just imagine when we give the benediction today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And some of you all are going to stand on the steps today. And say, well, he didn't really do like I thought he was going to do. So he must not have been as anointed today as he was last Sunday. Can, can, can you imagine that? The, the, the spirit didn't sound off in there today. Yes, he is. I hear him. I hear the rushing wind. I hear the sound from heaven. What we need to learn to say is that the result wasn't the same. Because sometimes God have us in a place of listening. And sometimes that disturbs some of us. When I was a young boy, I used to preach honestly. And you've heard me tell this before. That was back in my younger, my older days. I'm getting younger. That was back in the older days. But when I was much older, whenever I did revivals or I did a sermon or the Lord gave me an opportunity to minister, I used to always feel that if people wasn't jumping and shouting, I'd go home sometimes feeling like, wow, I didn't, I didn't pull it tonight. It, it, it wasn't ringing tonight. It, it didn't happen. And sometimes I used to go home really kind of feeling a little hard on myself. 
I, I felt that every time I mounted a platform or a pulpit, somebody had to be shouting. And sometimes if folk didn't shout, that means I preach a little longer. Because I got to find me a place to where I can pull over and somebody got to get a shout in. And how many of you know that sometimes we get away from what the Lord was saying and we go into scriptures that would make folks shout? Sometimes you start pulling out scriptures that you know folk going to get aroused off of. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You got to command your soul to folk just go to, whoo, whoo, go. Stuff, stuff, this stuff folk can relate to. And they go to, but you know what I learned? Every service wouldn't be a shouting service. But when I hear people say that word was what I needed, because only God knew what I came in here with. And now, I feel so much better because the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Listen, sometimes God pulls one-offs. But can you imagine what those disciples would have been saying in the 4th chapter and the 13th chapter and the 19th chapter? Can you imagine what they would have been saying? Well, we didn't hear the sound, so maybe God didn't show up today. We didn't hear the rushing mighty wind, so maybe God wasn't doing it today. Well, another one that said, well, I didn't see no cloven tongue like fire sitting on anybody. Maybe God didn't do it today. No. Sometimes that's what God's doing the most. You've heard people say that, haven't you? Sit down, you're doing the most. Sometimes that's when God is doing the most. If you don't believe it, my time is already gone. But turn real quick to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19. Could you imagine hearing them say the next time, before we are convinced that it was God, we got to hear the same sound, and we got to hear it even louder. See, I want to tell you what happens when you get that kind of thinking. When you get that kind of thinking, and when you start looking for God in that manner to do the same thing the same way every time, that becomes a trap. Y'all hear what God is saying today? You're good. That becomes a trap. Because then when the Holy Spirit wants to say something to you in that service that particular day, the enemy has already spoken to you or your mind has already spoken to you or you have already thought that if I don't hear the sound, if I don't hear that forceful wind, if I don't see people bucking and moving and doing what they did the last time, it becomes a trap. Your thinking gets to, the, get to the point to where you start taking the credit from God of him being able to move however he wants to do. And when he chooses to send a special experience, we're open for it. But because I come every time looking for him, I get what God intends for me to get. If it's only one phrase from one sentence or one word, I go out of here rejoicing. God, I heard you today. I got you. I got you. God, I got you. I, I know what you're saying. I got you. Look at, look at, look at 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19. And you can, you can read uh, as much as you want to read. But because my time is already gone, let me move down to verse 11. Verse 11. Well, mm, 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 mm. can I borrow five minutes? Grace? Okay, right. 
No, babe, I don't need 10. Just give me five. Man, this thing is good. Wow. Go to verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And withal, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Look at the threat that Jezebel puts out on the head of the prophet Elijah. In other words, she says, man, you're going to get it. I'm going to see to it that you do. I could say some other things, but my time is gone. Verse 3, and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Verse 6, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Why do I have you over in 1 Kings chapter 19? Why does the Spirit have us here? When I mounted this platform, came over here, the Spirit of the Lord immediately brought to me 1 Kings chapter 19. And he says, I want you to share this passage at the conclusion because everything you said up beforehand some folk have got to say, well, I agree with you on some of the things you said, but when you talk about some days God is quiet and some days God is noise and some days we're going to hear a sound and some days we won't and some days there's going to be a mighty wind and some days they're not. Mm, I can't quite agree with that, Pastor, because I think every Sunday we ought to bless. No. He, he said, support what I'm saying to you. Because some folk have got to have the scriptures. He said, give it to them. That's why I asked for this piece of paper. Because I was still taking dictation when I mounted this platform. The Lord was saying, 1 Kings 19, pull it out. And I had to stand here for a minute and look it up. While we were still singing. Pray. Look at verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord. Look what comes from heaven. <laughs> behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. Yes. I don't know about you, but when he gave me this passage, he says, tell him no matter how still it is today, I'm still passing through here. Yes. Hallelujah, God. 
Hallelujah, God. Let me tell you sometimes what we struggle with as pastors and preachers. Out of all of this other stuff that God had given me throughout the week and all of my preparation, I felt that when I got down to the end of what I had, I dropped off the porch. Because we think every service is supposed to end with a shout. And I said, God, I'm... Out of all that you're saying, and I know what you're saying, and what you're saying is good enough for me, but we got some step people and some parking lot people that will wait until they get on the outside and say, Lord, I should have stayed at home today because he wasn't ringing in there today like, like I've said, no! And when I mounted this platform, and while we were singing, a spirit of joy came because God says, go to 1 Kings chapter 19 and, and, here, and here's what I need you to send them home with today. Thank you, Jesus. And he says, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind. There's Acts chapter 2. They had the wind like sometimes we do. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind see he's not going to do it the same way all the time what if the disciples would have said well I know God came but I didn't I didn't I didn't get the wind of it you you discredit God because he says I showed up Just didn't bring the wind today. But somebody's going to leave here different. Because instead of you hearing the wind, they sense the wind of the Spirit blowing in them. And after the wind, here's the sound. Let me tell you something. This wasn't even on my mind until I stood here. And the Spirit said, go quickly while you're singing. Just keep, go quickly to, to, to 1 Kings 19. And after the wind, earthquake. That's the sound. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake... A what? Tell me that's not in Acts. All the way back in the Old Testament. But the Lord was not in the fire. That's how he did it then. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so that when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Here's the conclusion. Here's the conclusion of what the Lord is saying. Don't discredit him because 
it doesn't happen the same way every time. The Spirit of the Lord is here today to meet every need of every person that's sitting in this house today. I sense the presence of God. I sense the power of God. I sense God so strong in here today to fill somebody with his spirit. And as he has spoken to you today, if you'll do what the scripture says in every scripture that we read in Acts, it talked about how they believed. Not how they responded, but how they believed. And as they believed, they were filled with the Spirit. I'm going to give the invitation first for sinners and for backsliders. And then I'm going to give the third invitation that God is giving to us today. If you are a sinner or a backslider, I want you to just stand up right where you are now. If you're a person who says, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ, I want you to stand right where you are. Now listen to me for those persons that are going to the wall. Thank you for being on the wall. And as you go to the wall week after week, Sunday after Sunday, you are watch people on the wall. You are being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I said to you last Sunday, because I don't want you to feel that there are particular persons or there are appointees that you see go to the wall. When the invitation is given, there are people that get up as being led of God to go to the walls. And I want the purpose, as it has been over the years, is for you to watch in the area that you are standing. And if you see somebody get up to give their life to Christ or to renew their fellowship with the Lord, please don't just stand. Move quickly and get to them and pray with them. Speak to them. Help them to understand how they can confess that they are sinners and ask God to forgive them for their sins and receive Jesus as their Savior. Don't let them just stand there looking around, not knowing what to do. I'm up. What do I do from this point? Listen, this is a critical time. This is a time that we stand between life and death. And whenever the Spirit moves upon the heart of a person and they get up, let's get to them quickly. Share God's word with them and pray with them and lead them to Christ. Don't wait on anybody else to do it. Well, I'm not in that area. Well, if you see one person not moving, you move and get to them and let's pray them through. Because sometimes while they are standing, the enemy is already speaking to them and trying to get them to change their mind from what the Holy Spirit is doing in them right then. Amen? So when... These persons that are standing, and if it's somebody on the road, you're saved and filled with the Spirit, and nobody gets to the person that's on your road that may be standing, you get up and move over there. Nobody has been assigned to win souls. If we're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, it's all of our prerogatives to win souls for Jesus Christ. There's somebody here today that's not saved. And you believe God has spoken to you or God is speaking to you right now. And you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Would you just stand up where you are? Whatever row you're on, whatever aisle you're on, would you just stand up? Pastor, I want to be saved and I want to give my life to Christ. Would you stand? Is there one? If there's somebody here today that's a backslider. I want to renew your fellowship with the Lord. Would you stand where you are? Pastor, I'm coming today to renew my fellowship. I'm saved, but I've backslidden. And today I've heard the speaking of God through his word. And I'm coming to renew my fellowship today. Would you just stand where you are? Is there one? 
break me, melt me, mold me. Is that one? Yeah. Is that somebody without a church home today? And God has spoken to you concerning this house, this ministry. You want to come by letter candidate for baptism, Christian experience, or reinstatement. Would you stand up where you are and step out in this center aisle? Is there one? Spirit of the living God. Spirit of. Here's the fourth call I want to give today. Anybody saved, love the Lord, but desire to be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Would you get up out of that seat and come to this center aisle right now? Anybody that says, Pastor, I'm saved and I'm sanctified. But as I have been hearing about the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, and as the Lord has spoken to me today, I'm asking to be filled with the Spirit. Would you get up out of that seat if God's dealing with you now? Come to this center aisle. Mold me, is the one? Heal me. Anybody want to be closer to God? Want to draw closer to the Holy Spirit? Get up out of that seat today. Let us pray with you. Living God, fall afresh. Father, we've done what you told us to do, and we thank you for your word today. Speak to every heart right now, Jesus. Thank you for per persons that are saved and, and filled with the Spirit and loving you every day of our lives. Lord, help us to love you even the more. And we give you glory and honor and praise today. If there's somebody here that needs healing, Jesus, you are the healer. So touch and heal them right now. Make somebody whole today. In Jesus' name. And we receive it right now by faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lift somebody's burden today. Heal somebody's wounded spirit and broken heart today. As only you can. In Jesus' name. Heal somebody's finances today. Somebody who's been tithing and giving and love you, God, and now in need. Heal somebody's finances today. Meet a need. Open a door and make a way now as only you can. And we receive it now by faith in Jesus' name. And we give you glory and honor. And we bless you for it. And go ahead and thank God for the day. Thank him for the day. Thank him for the day. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you kindly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is Terrell still over there? Terrell still there? Y'all bless God for Terrell today. I, I meant to give you this earlier. I meant to give you this earlier. Terrell is a freshman. At St. All in Raleigh. He's on his freshman year at St. All. And this young, this young brother thought it not robbery to come home today to play for his youth choir. <laughs> came from St. Aug to be here with the choir today and to play for the choir. And I want to thank God for his willingness to do what he did today. Amen. Young man that's making some marks, some great marks and great tracks, and home today. Did you drive here? Did you drive? You drove from Raleigh, huh? You drove yesterday? You driving back today? Huh? You're going to drive back in about 30 minutes. Did you get free gas? 
You had to pay for some gas. All right. Listen, I want to be a blessing to him. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I said, I want to be a blessing to him. This young man loves God, loves his family, loves his church, and thought it not robbery to come all the way here today to play for us. How many of y'all know early voting started last Thursday? How many of y'all voted the first day? How many of y'all voted since Thursday already? Who's voted already? Woo, we got to do it better than that. Man, that's only a few hands. Listen, listen. Make sure, make sure if you are an early voter that you get out to vote. Let me give you some timelines and some things you need to know before you leave. Early voting did start Thursday. And be sure, be sure to make your voice heard by voting. We need to vote. I talked to you last week about how critical it was. I don't want to go back through that whole spiel again today. But it is critical that we vote. Vote however you choose. We can't tell you who to vote for and how to vote. But vote however you choose. Vote prayerfully. And vote thinking. Change. I can't tell you that. Doing early voting in person at select voting sites by November 5th. If you're going to vote by mail, it has to be postmarked are dropped off at the County Board of Elections by November 8th. If you're going to do early voting in person, it has to be done by November 5th. After that, you can't do any more early voting. It started the 20th. It will go to November the 5th. If you're going to do it by mail, it's got to be postmarked, dropped off at the County Board of Elections by November the 8th. Or in person, at your assigned voting precinct on November 8th. If you're going to wait till the last day, voting day, November the 8th, then you've got to do it at your precinct. The last day to cast your vote is November 8th. Also, make sure of your active voter status. You've really got to make sure this year, this time of voting, you got to make sure your status is active. I want to tell you why and the way to do it. Check to see if your districts have changed because they have changed some of the districts and get a sample ballot for your districts. The way to do that is to go to the North Carolina Board of Elections website and you'll see the links to all of the information you may need. You can go to your website. Go to the North Carolina Voting Website. Board of Elections. North Carolina Board of Elections website. And you'll see the different links for you to click on to make sure that your status for voting is active. Now, Deacon Roseboro shared some of this information with me a few weeks ago. And when I went to the library on Thursday morning, as I told you last Sunday, I was going to try to be there when they opened, and I was right there, close to their opening. I went up to the desk to register, and I said to the little lady sitting there, she said, what is your name? And I gave her my name. I said, Dennis Bishop. And she said... Dennis Bishop, Dennis Bishop. And she scrolled, she scrolled. I don't see you. What's your address? I gave her my address. She scrolled through there. What's your zip code? I gave her my zip code. I don't see you, she said. You're not on here. I said, ma'am, I'm registered to vote. I've been registered. I vote all the time. I ought to be in, in, in the uh, database. 
She said to me, what is your phone number? I gave her a phone number. And she says, I'm sorry, I, I don't see you on here. Give me your address again. Gave her my address again. And she said, I have one address listed in here with the bishop. And it's the same address as yours. I said, well, that's me. No, that's not you. She said, this is Ennis Bishop. Seriously. And I said, well, maybe you misunderstood what I said. I said, Dennis. She said, no, this is Ennis Bishop. And I said, that's my twin brother. He sent me to vote. And let me, and let me tell you, she was, she was, I, was, I was only cutting up with her early that morning. She kind of looked up and smiled, and she said, oh, okay, that's your twin brother. No, ma'am, that's me. And, and then she asked to see my driver's license. And I had to show her that I was Dennis Bishop. She said, well, I've got I've to do this correct because they've got you in here as Ennis Bishop. As long as I've been registered. Now, a few weeks ago, Deacon Roseberry was telling me we've got to make sure they've got the right information and you've got an active status. And thank God, as your leader, I got, I got to experience it firsthand. Now, y'all got to understand, stuff is being pulled that we got to be aware of. You got to have your correct information, take your driver's license with you in case you are an Ennis instead of a Dennis, and, and you got to prove some of this stuff. So make sure, make sure your, your, your district hadn't changed, and make sure you got all of your valid information that you're going to need to take with you. Please don't get there and get discouraged because of something like that. And I had to wait in line for a few minutes until she got some people to come over and correct it. Please don't get discouraged. Don't say, I'm not going to vote. Forget it. It's not going to matter. No. Get, get, you'll feel a whole lot better when you exercise your voice. And your vote is your voice. So please, ma'am, please, sirs, make sure you go out and vote. Will you do that? All right. Have I already benedicted you? I haven't? Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and keep on giving you his shalom, his peace. May he bless you going out and coming in, down sitting and uprising, bless you in your basket, your field, your store, and your barn. May he keep filling you with his spirit, his power, and his love. And from all of my family and myself, we love each and every one of you and say to all of you, God be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. So good to see all of you today, and God bless you. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.